Hi guys, welcome back to Blue Mountain Bushcraft and Outdoors. I have a big surprise for you today. Guess what I'm going to do? You got it. We're going to take a look at a knife. Yeah, I know. What can I tell you? It's what I like to do. So stand by. This is from a journeyman ABS knife smith by the name of Dave Wanger. It's a really nice blade. I think you guys are going to really appreciate it. So the blade that we have for you today is again by journeyman ABS knife smith Dave Wanger. Um, I recently found out about him, I guess last year 2016, uh, through an associate of mine. And uh, I was really impressed with his work. He does some phenomenal stuff. He does both uh, forged blades and stock removal blades. This happens to be one of his stock removal blades. Um, but it's, it's really fantastic. It's called the Belt 4. And I'll show that to you. Hopefully the camera will focus in on here. Got a four and a quarter inch blade of 80 CRV2 tool steel. I will set this down we'll go over some of the specs for it and show you some some usage video and tell you where you guys can pick one of these up for yourself if you want to okay guys so what we have here is again the wanger belt 4 um, probably the most pedestrian thing about this blade is its is its name but don't let that fool you uh, this thing is fantastic i got this back in the beginning of December. It's a loner. It does not belong to me, um, although I wish it did. And this is from Dave Wenger, who's an ABS journeyman knife smith, so he knows his business. Okay, so the specs on the belt four are: we've got a four and a quarter inch blade and an eight and three quarter inch overall length. It is made of 80 CRV2. It is a low alloy tool steel, renowned for its toughness. Its edge holding ability is pretty good. Um, it's an excellent steel. I've got numerous blades now made with it and very impressed with the steel. The blade here at the spine, right here at the handle, is 0.187 inches thick. So reasonably thick stock here but as you can see you've got a very nice taper into a very fine point as well as a tapered tang so as thick as the stock is right here at its thickest point this knife is very lightweight and I'm told by Dave that the handle underneath these scales is skeletonized for additional weight removal. And again, I believe that because it, it feels very light, very quick in the hand. The finish that you see on here is a black oxide. Um, probably my only complaint with this knife. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I like to occasionally use my knives for food prep and I'd really just rather see a natural patina on here, but whatever, that's a small nitpick. The handle scales are a bead blasted micarta, and let's see if the camera will pick up that texture. But this stuff is really grippy without being aggressive at all. It just feels really good in the hand, and like all micarta, as it gets damp, it gets even grippier. Again, underneath these handle scales and this taper tang is skeletonized. And these scales are epoxied in place and held in place with copper pins. You've got a very generous lanyard hole here in the back, which is also a copper tube, which gives us a really nice 
rustic kind of look. I really like the way this blade looks and feels in the hand. So excellent materials, excellent craftsmanship. The grind is just simply perfect. As you can see, it's a full flat ground blade. So you've got a continuous taper from the spine all the way down to the edge. The belt fort is delivered in a Kydex pancake style sheath. This one has a camo pattern applied to it. He's got all sorts of different types of patterns available. See, it's got a nice little drain hole down here. And it is set up with a leather tab. This sheath is designed to be kept inside the waistband. And this tab has a pull the dot snap on it. So it's not coming off unless you pull it just the right way. Uses a Phillips head screw to hold it in place, which is nice. You don't need to be carrying around any special tools to reconfigure this however you want. And there's some extra holes here to lengthen or shorten it. You can customize this however you like it. Uh, I have carried this at work on my belt. I've carried this just around in my daily life underneath another shirt. And it is super, super comfortable, very secure. And the way this thing rides, even with an eight and three quarter inch fixed blade knife, um, it just kind of disappears on you. So I really like that. Forgot to mention, it's got some jimping right up here, which is aggressive enough so that when you push your thumb into it, it does give you some traction, but it's not so aggressive that it just is going to tear your thumb up. So the ergonomics on this are, are just simply outstanding. It's so light in the hand. Um, I really like the way this thing feels. All right, so like I said before, the belt grind is a full flat ground knife with a excellent V edge on it. It's very sharp, um, nice and thin behind the edge, so it really lends itself well to slicing. So what we've got here is just a piece of scrap leather. Um, as you can see, it's pretty thick stuff. Let's just see how the belt four does slicing this piece of leather. No problem whatsoever. This thing can cut through this all day. No issues at all. So I think I mentioned earlier that my only complaint with this knife is the black oxide finish. Not that it's a bad finish, which it isn't. It's basically a cold gun blowing. Um, but cold blowing definitely has a, a certain unpleasant smell to it. And it wears fairly easily. You know, you know that's kind of a double-edged sword. As the finish on here wears, it is extremely easy to reapply it and touch it up. Um, but for a knife that is going to see use in food prep, I'd prefer not to have this. I'd prefer just to be able to put my own patina on it and, and call it good. But nevertheless, that doesn't have any effect on the cutting ability and the geometry of the blade. So let's see how she does cutting up this apple. In that thin grind, just makes this thing super slicey. Is slicey a word? I don't know. If it's not, I just made it up. So as you can see, despite the thickness on the spine with the, uh, the wide tapered blade and that fine edge, you can just get paper thin 
translucent pieces of of apple with this. So food prep is not an issue for this knife. It's very, very capable. You know, guys, that just looking at this, how well this is going to do feather sticking. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with it. Um, but I don't even know what kind of wood this is, but it's not a soft wood. This is stuff I've split down before. Uh, it's pretty hard. But that fine V edge and that flat grind just work wonders. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time feather sticking. All right. But I know people like to see it. The Belt 4 has no issues doing feather sticks whatsoever. I will say that this is not going to be my first choice for a batoning knife. For one thing, it's a flat ground blade and flat grinds tend to bind up a little bit more uh, for batoning. But for light stuff, don't get me wrong, this will do a fine job. Also, with the taper down to the point here, you know, you've got a fairly fine point and ADCRV2 is an excellent very very tough steel again this has been Rockwell hardened up to I think 60 and I believe if I remember correctly he uses a torch after the hardness has been set and draws back a little bit of the hardness in the spine which should give this even more resilience um, but even still I'm not going to want to be beat the heck out of this, and frankly, it's not what this knife is for. For making kindling small stuff, absolutely no problem. It'll do that all day long, but I'm not going to sit there and smash on this with a log. Okay, so something I've been wanting to try for a little while is to make a Mojave scissor trap. Uh, I've never made one before, so I really don't know how this is going to go. Hopefully I remember what to do. Um, but what we're going to do is use this bush here. We're not going to cut the whole thing down. I'm just going to trim out some pieces here and here, and then use this as my, uh, my engine to power the trap. So let's see how the belt four does when doing some primitive trap making. whistled right through that. Okay, as you can see, this is currently not under any tension at all. You've got the cordage tied off here, running through this loop. Again, those are connected by cordage at the bottom. string is running through this loop to part of the trigger mechanism. We 
which is tied off to your spring. This is what's giving it its tension. All I've done is a very simple notch in this stick here. Used a natural Y on this branch and just sandwiched the bait stick. in there and I'll show you how this works the animal's gonna come in through here take whatever is on this bait stick triggers the trap and it is stuck right in here so that's my first time making one of these. Definitely won't be my last. This is a pretty cool trap. We're gonna keep messing around with this one. Okay guys, so we've cut some leather. We did a little bit of feather sticking. As I'm not gonna baton the knife, it'll do it. You've seen me baton how many knives? This one's not gonna look any different. Like I said, it's got a fine tip on it gets down pretty thin here at the end. I don't think this knife is going to be in any danger of breaking from doing anything reasonable with it, but with that fine tip on it, I just, I don't want to wail on it. All right, it's not what it's built for. What is this built for? I got to tell you, the handle on here is second to none. It's a very simple looking handle. If any of you are familiar with the LT Wright Genesis, and that handle feels good to you, you're going to love this handle. It's very simple, but extremely comfortable in a whole variety of different grips. Um, any grip you want to hold it in, it just feels excellent. Rock solid. The geometry on this blade is outstanding. Um, I really like being able to choke up on it for doing finer work. Uh, I think this would make a great skinning blade. A great hunting blade. Does excellent on food prep. It does very well with wood. Um, and it just feels very light, very fast in the hand. I'm not a knife fighter, guys, by any stretch of the imagination, but this thing feels like it's got some fight in it. It really does. It's an excellent design. It's exquisitely crafted. This thing is built to be used. Um, and I am not going to enjoy sending this back at all. I really like this. I believe he charges somewhere in the realm of 240, 250 for this setup. This is for the stock removal. He does make this in a forged model. Um, and that one's a little bit more. Uh, you're going to have to check his site. Links will be down below. But, guys, if you're looking for a good belt knife, something in the four to four and a half inch range with exquisite craftsmanship, extreme comfort and functionality, you cannot go wrong with a Wanger Belt 4. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. It's got a rustic look to it, but the fit, the finish, the functionality of this thing is just really outstanding. I really like Dave's work a lot. And if I can finagle a way to purchase this, I will, but this is just not a good time for me to be buying knives. So I'm probably gonna have to send it back. But guys, if you're in the market, Definitely go check him out. Links to his site will be down below. Um, highly recommend it. This is an A-list knife for me. Good job. All right, guys. My hands are frozen. Um, I'm done videoing for now. So until the next time, see ya.